changed my life forever. She chose to include Abraham Lincoln's life story in our schoolwork for the entire month of February 1967. Sitting in her class, I learned of slavery for the first time. It was the singular most shocking moment of my life. My seven-year-old brain could not comprehend that here in America, that here in America one human could actually own another human, and that the great-grandparents of my friends back in Detroit had actually been bought and sold. My Sunday school Bible studies had taught me that Jesus called on us to do good works, and that helping people was not a choice, it was an order from God. So as I was sitting there, and I thought of Lincoln's boyhood struggles, it was as if a light went up when light bulb went off in my head. If a motherless kid in a log cabin could grow up and free the slaves and change this nation, surely a kid living in a cellar can't, can do something, can do anything. Surely not as epic as Lincoln, but something. It was at that moment that I realized that if you don't do absolutely everything in your power to change the world, evil will prevail. And that fight never goes away. It is a constant fight until your last breath on this earth. Now a year later, I was at the dentist's office, waiting room, and I noticed the Life magazine cover with the sorrowful, veiled face of Greg Scott King. The picture from Dr. King's funeral. My parents thought I would be too upset, so they had decided not to tell me of Dr. King's assassination. Needless to say, I never did make that appointment <laughs> that day. Uh, I was indeed very upset. And I also started watching the TV news every night because they were never going to do that to me again. <laughs> now, weeks later, my mother woke me uh, one morning and said, Honey, I've got some really bad news for you that will upset you, but you don't have to go to school today. On that morning, we all received the news that Bobby Kennedy had died. Now the tra tragic events of the spring of 1968 only reinforced my eight-year-old mind and my belief that good people had to roll up their sleeves and do what they can to stop the evil. And I was ready to get going. Two months later, a man who was running for governor of New Hampshire was walking down our street going door to door. He just reached out and shook my hand. My first question is, are you a Democrat? <laughs> After he replied, yes. I went off with him and I told him a story about every single person that was on the street, and I haven't missed a single election since. <laughs> My mother likes to, uh, to say that God knew what he was doing when he put Ray Buckley in New Hampshire. Nowhere on earth do one million people elect more people to more offices more often. Nearly everybody in New Hampshire holds an office, some even two or three. And we have elections every single year. In our towns, we elect the person who plows the roads. We elect the person that sits on the library board. We elect everybody. Everybody has a position. And in New Hampshire, we take our presidential primary very seriously. Even the children. Now, when I was 15, I was home with a February cold one morning, and I was on the couch watching the Today Show with Barbara Walters. And she announced that coming up was her interview with Democratic presidential candidate, former Georgia Governor Jimmy Carter. Now I remembered his name because a couple years earlier I read that Time Magazine story when they did a cover story on him about, about Carter. And it mentioned that one of the first things he did when he became elected, when he became governor, was to place a portrait of Dr. King in the state capitol building. So I was already a Jimmy Carter fan. But after, but after watching that interview, there was no doubt that I was a Carterite. Okay. Now, Carterite might be not strong enough word for what I really was. I think I was more of a fanatic. In Christmas of 1975, I only asked for one gift. You see, we didn't have much money in I kind of figured out before my younger siblings about how much that actually was. And if you donated $25 to the Carter campaign, you got a membership card. 
declaring that you were a Charter Carter member, and it had Jimmy Carter's signature on it. Now, I wasn't sure if there was enough money for a $25 gift, but when I saw, and, and when I saw that big wrapped box under the tree, I have to admit I was a, a bit disappointed. I said, but that's okay, they did the best they could. Well, you can guess the rest of the story. At the very bottom of that large box, they had taken the Charter Carter membership card with my name on it, and it hangs framed in my office at the Nancy Democrat.